connecting with nature. Um, today we're going to talk about the white birch tree. It's significant in our culture and society and in our environment. The white birch, also called paper birch, uh, well known, uh, easily recognized tree by most people because it's got the, the white bark that peels off easily in sheets and was well known for uh, making canoes by the First Nations people. We'll talk more about uh, the birch bark canoe and how the white birch figured into that. The white birch is a beautiful tree that's found throughout Ontario except in uh, far north of the Hudson Bay shoreline. It uh, tends to adapt well in forest areas, but it's called a pioneer tree. It's one of the first trees to establish out in the open. Much like willows, aspens, poplars are pioneer trees as well. So this was a farmer's field at one time at Lakehead University, and there was a stone pile here and a couple of seeds of the white birch fell in this area and took hold and were allowed to grow because the farmer would work around the stone pile. So it's become uh, a beautiful tree. As a pioneer species, you usually find their multi-trunked, anywhere from two to five trunks. This particular one has four trunks, significant in the fact that the four directions, north, south, east, and west. Uh, so it's used uh, here with right beside the Three Sisters Garden as sort of a, uh, a, a significant tree in First Nations culture. Birch trees don't uh, suffer heat and humidity well. They grow better in the north, uh, but they don't survive well under human conditions or hot conditions in the south. So some of them only live 30 years, as short as 30 years in hot areas. 50 years uh, is an average life in this area, but some can live up to 100 years up north in the northern forest. Birch are a significant tree for uh, wildlife because um, the birch, the seeds are eaten by a lot of trees or a lot of species of birds. Uh, and also the browse is significant for white-tailed deer and moose, uh, good browse. Birch trees flower very early and they're in the same family as the older, but unlike the older where the female catkins are persistent, um, the birch female catkins uh, disintegrate at maturity. So they get their caskins and now the leaves are just coming out on the, on the birch tree. It can get to grow 25 meters tall, uh, the, the white birch. There are several species of uh, birch in uh, our area. There are 10 species in Canada altogether, six trees and four shrub across Canada. The only ones we have in this area is uh, the white birch or paper birch and then the yellow birch, the Betula alleghaniensis that you see growing in hemlocks and moisture areas. So only two birch species in our area. Uh, ten across Canada. Birch trees were highly regarded in culture around the world. Certainly in uh, Celtic culture, the birch was uh, admired for its adaptability and sustainability, growing in harsh environments and being the first one to establish after a fire. So therefore, uh, Celtic culture highly regarded the birch tree and you'll hear mention in a lot of Irish folk songs or English ballad the mention of birch. In North America, the Algonquin First Nations used the birch as well. 
We know about the, the sage and the cedar and the sweet grass and the tobacco used for smudging ceremonies, but the birch, the white birch was always uh, regarded as well as a medicine tree in Algonquin culture. They also carried, um, they fabricated carrying baskets and yokes um, out of birch, being e pliable and easy to bend. Uh, so the birch tree not only figured highly in the wigwams and canoes, but also served a lot of other uses for North American First Nations people. Not only did First Nations use the birch for medicine and for food, we know the chaga mushroom grows on it and the twigs have a, an aseptic um, chemicals in them, but also they used them for art in an ancient form of art called birch bark biting. It's uh, not as popular as it was one time, but uh, intricate, beautiful patterns can be made by taking the birch bark and biting down and making patterns on it. It's a lost art now, only practiced by a few. The white birch figures highly in cultures around the world, but certainly in our North American First Nations culture.